is a political analyst. You have heard his introduction and seen his biography in the chat. Uh, he will be speaking to us on ensuring inclusion in the dialogue process. Uh, Dr. Goitom, uh, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmed, and uh, thank you very much for Chatham House for the invitation. Um, actually, my uh, remarks are going to be more about um, the limitations of uh, uh, what a national dialogue uh, can do in Ethiopia's current circumstances and what sort of um, alternative solutions uh, might be better um, to deal with our, with our problems. Um, so I'd like to start off by pointing out that um, the national dialogue is presented as the main solution for Ethiopia's current problems. Uh, looking at um, statements from various international actors and also uh, within Ethiopia. This looks like not only the main uh, initiative, but it looks like the only initiative that's on the agenda, which means that uh, we really need to scrutinize the nature and utility of this intervention uh, and not simply uh, accept, it at, accept its utility at face value. Um, we should start off by uh, asking what the purpose uh, of the uh, national dialogue is and, and, and what problems it can uh, possibly address. The proclamation states that its purpose is to resolve the differences of opinions and disagreements among various political uh, and opinion leaders and also segments of society in Ethiopia on the most fundamental national issues. And this is to be done through a broad-based inclusive uh, public dialogue that engenders national consensus. National consensus is an extremely ambitious uh, objective or, and I think quite laudable, uh, but it's also quite vague, right? Um, and important to uh, consider that. And um, most of my remarks will be around that actually. Um, so is this national dialogue sufficient uh, as a solution to Ethiopia's current political challenges? My view is that the problem is not only limited to the composition of the uh, uh, commission and the, the manner in which it was uh, uh, put together, which many commentators have uh, uh, drawn attention to. Um, but I think there's a gap between what the national dialogue can deliver and what Ethiopia is facing as a challenge. And it's quite important to be mindful of that because it's presented as the solution. Um, I would like to start off by reminding us uh, you know, taking a, a glimpse of, of uh, uh, the current uh, security situation in Ethiopia, the security landscape. Ethiopia is currently engulfed by a number of insurgencies um, and the government's territorial control has significantly been compromised in at least four regional states. Um, this is moreover a trend that has been moving in one direction over the past two or three years rather than uh, sort of a limited problem in time. And it seems to be moving in continue to move in that direction. Uh, in terms of human rights abuses, we're seeing large scale ethnic cleansing. We're seeing starvation crimes against millions of people. Um, we've seen people burnt alive. We've seen people put into concentration camps. Uh, the humanitarian situation is dire. Uh, 22 million people uh, in need of emergency food aid and millions actual, in actual famine conditions. And not just in Tigray, but in, in, in Romania and other parts of the country as well. You all know this, of course, but I think it's important to point that out. And this should be the background against which we think about what a national dialogue can do. And I'm also, I have to point out that I'm surprised that we haven't talked about this so far. Um, these are very serious conditions and it hasn't been mentioned uh, so far in this, uh, in this discussion. Um, and I think it has implications for the urgency of the solutions that Ethiopia needs, uh, the, st the stakes that we're dealing with, and therefore also the limitations of uh, what the national dialogue can do. Uh, we're witnessing the breakdown of political order, I think, and not just mere uh, political differences. And personally, I think that we need to do more than put together an initiative uh, that is limited to deliberation, because that seems to be the main function of the national dialogue. Um, by deliberation, resolve our political differences. Um, this brings me to my uh, second uh, point, which is the extent to which a national dialogue is a sufficient solution to Ethiopia's uh, problems depends also on the demands that Ethiopia's 
political factions are making. Uh, let's go through some of them. First of all, most opposition groups um, seem to be of the view that Ethiopia's political system is both autocratic and that, uh, or that uh, um, the incumbent uh, attained power through illegitimate uh, elections. Um, they also have very practical security concerns. Uh, in contemporary Ethiopia, journalists and political dissidents are regularly kidnapped, uh, they disappear without due process and are jailed uh, and so forth. Um, so what these people want, the people with arms, the journalists, the million, tens of millions of people that are rebelling against the status quo is they want an end to repression. They want an end to political exclusion. Um, these, this is a matter of power, right? This isn't a matter of deliberation. Um, and I think it's important to uh, point that out. Um, the opposition groups also use the language of national dialogue, but I think they're talking about something very different uh, than a purely deliberative process. Um, what they're looking for is something that results in uh, power sharing and security guarantees. Uh, and none of this seems to be on the agenda of the current national dialogue. So it seems to me that everyone is talking about a national dialogue, but we're talking across purposes. Uh, and uh, it's important that we are on the same page in terms of uh, what this can deliver. Um, I want to conclude by uh, saying that I think the current national dialogue is not organized in a manner to deal with Ethiopia's first order problems, and they're quite urgent. Um, to have a meaningful national dialogue, first of all, I think certain minimal requirements uh, have to be met. Um, we need a political atmosphere on a national level uh, that provides the political space for people to air their political views and opinions without fear for their physical uh, uh, security. Um, you can't have a national dialogue or a dialogue at gunpoint, which is really what we would have now. Uh, and there would be a great deal of self-censorship and um, that would, you know, that would paint the one thing that a national dialogue uh, 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 is supposed to deliver, which is deliberation. You wouldn't actually have a genuine deliberation. Um, so as things stand, uh, as things stand, I think these conditions uh, cannot be expected to be created by uh, domestic actors. Um, in other words, I think what Ethiopia really needs is third-party mediation rather than uh, uh, just deliberation. Um, broadly or generally, I also think that a new political settlement should precede a national dialogue, or the national dialogue should be part of a component that leads to a political settlement, because that's what we're really fighting about, all of us, uh, everywhere, it seems, uh, at the moment. Uh, there was some sort of alliance of some social forces uh, that were working together uh, until quite recently, but that broad alliance or broader but that alliance seems to have been falling apart now. So there are even more people that are looking for uh, a, a new political settlement and an end to repression and political exclusion. Um, so in conclusion, I'd say that the national dialogue should be postponed, I think, until the right circumstances are in place, because an illegitimate and untimely process would do immense damage, uh, political damage to Ethiopian politics and society. A national dialogue that is used uh, as an opportunistic tool by the incumbent uh, would increase and fuel uh, communal mistrust, cynicism, and mistrust of institutions. So, you know, essentially this would be a, a great waste of uh, very scarce uh, economic, political, and social capital, which I don't think we can afford. So uh, important to have a critical discussion about um, what it can deliver, and whether certain circumstances, conditions should be put in place before we proceed with this. Because I think um, if we fail with this effort, uh, I, you know, we might not have the political and social capital uh, to try a second round. I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much.
ሀገር የኢትዮጵያ ጉሪ ይገባሻል ያስደፍሩ ጀግና ልጅ ወልደሻር ደመን ሰማ አምላክ 
فتنا وائلك يمي فتاتنش انغتش راسشن تشيلولي يا ولا ما قصوني وسدي عسر موتي انتنا قلي اما ما لا تشي ما يتنيو ما يا ما 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 ما